Good morning, happy Monday. I am going to quickly show you guys my makeup for this week. I keep all of my day-to-day -day products here in this dressing table. So for brows, I'm gonna go with the Dip Brow from Anastasia because I really like this. I just uh, rarely use it. It takes a little bit extra time to use this, but I do still have a lot of this left, so I kind of want to use it up. Uh, primer, I am trying to use up this Too Faced Hangover RX. I like this, probably wouldn't repurchase it though. Concealer and corrector, Sephora Future Gel Corrector, and then the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. For base, I'm going to go with the Dior Nude Air, which is a serum foundation. I'm in number 30. Clarins SPF, of course. The Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, which I do really like. Um, down here we have some bronzer. This is NARS Laguna. I'm still trying to use this up. It's on its last leg. I also want to use up this, uh, I think this is like a contour stick from Sonia Kashuk. It's a cream uh, product. The Kevin O'Quan Sculpting Powder. Mascara is going to be the CoverGirl Clump Crusher Extensions Mascara. And then I'm also trying out the L'Oreal Voluminous Base, which I actually like. Don't know if it's really life-changing, but it is nice. Essence Make Me Brow for my brows. I'll stick that over here. Eyelash Curler for eyeshadows. I'm going to use my new Tartlet in Bloom palette with the Urban Decay uh, Potion Primer and the Kat Von D Liner. And then for blush and highlighter, I'm using this uh, Becca Jaclyn Hill palette because I haven't used this in a really long time. I am getting ready to leave work and I'm going to stop by the mall this is the last day of the VIB sale, so I'm going to go and see if there's anything else that I want to pick up while the sale is on. I don't need anything, but I'm going to see maybe I forgot about something. On a side note, I'm freaking obsessed with this matte shaker from Lancome. It's so good. Okay, I just left the mall and I did a little bit of shopping. <laughs> I ended up getting that NARS palette and I really wasn't going to but I've decided that I'm going to get rid of the Jaclyn Hill Becca palette that I have because I don't need that and also the NARS highlighting palette. So I had to say goodbye to something and I've decided that I am going to say goodbye to that palette. I really, really, really love that NARS palette and it's just so pretty. I'll show you guys some swatches that I have on my arm here because I swatched some of the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors that I do own against the NARS palette and they're very similar. I'm trying to get the best lighting here. Hopefully you can see it. But on the top is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors. From left to right, it is Champagne Pop. And then in the middle is Opal and the last one is Rose Gold. And then on the bottom is the NARS palette. So it's from lightest to darkest. I don't know what the names are, but that's what it looks like. So they're actually quite similar and they're similar texture too, but man, I just really freaking love that NARS palette. I made a quick trip to MAC also because I want to rearrange some of my palettes. So I got two of the MAC Pro palettes in the medium size. So they look like this. They fit either like a nine eyeshadow pan insert or four blush pan insert um, or two blushes and six shadows. You can basically customize it in a lot of different ways. I have this quad. Um, so in order for it to fit into the six pan insert, I picked up two more shadows just to kind of round it out. Okay, I'm gonna put my palettes together. There is just something really fun about playing with MAC palettes and buying things from MAC in a pan and just moving them around. I don't know why, but I'm really good about that. So. so like I showed you, I have this palette here, which is um, my six pan blush palette. I also have an empty, well now empty, large pro palette. And this used to have what is now in this medium pro palette. So now I'm not really sure what to do with this. I'm also debating whether or not I should depot this NARS uh, blush palette. I really love this NARS palette. I love all the colors in here. They're all actually permanent shades, but the hinge on this lid has broken off, which is annoying. So I'm kind of debating whether or not to depot it into one of these MAC Pro palettes or just leave it until it completely falls off the hinge.
Hello, happy Tuesday. I took the day off today because I had a doctor's appointment in Sunnybrook this morning and I decided to take the whole day off and um, do some things, some errands and just lounge around midweek. Uh, but I just got home from doing said errands and I got a parcel in the mail. The parcel I got today was dropped off by FedEx and it is quite a heavy box. So I'm actually really interested to see what's in here. Here's what's in the box. They are a bunch of these Le Petit Marseille body washes. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. But apparently it has just arrived in Canada, which is exciting. So they come in a bunch of different scents and also different formulations. Like this one is a shower cream. This one is a cream. I believe this one's a gel. And then these two are creams. And I smelled, which one did I smell? I think it was this one, cotton, milk, and poppy, and I liked it. It just smells so fresh and clean, so I really like that one. This vanilla milk one smells really good too. So that's really cool, I'm excited about these. I was hoping to get my brows done at the Benefit Brow Bar, but um, they don't have any spots available today, so I will just go at another date. I'm gonna show you guys my MAC palettes right now. I've decided that I'm going to depot some of my makeup products because just having them the way they're stored right now is not ideal for me and I'll show you why in a second. I'm going to depot them now and then I'm going to pop over to the MAC store to see if I need to get more palettes. I was at Chapters earlier and I picked up the cutest set of notebooks. They were only, I think, $13 for a pack of three. And I'm all out of notebooks, surprise, surprise. I was actually really surprised when I was looking for a notebook and I could not find one. I just wanted a simple line notebook that I can jot down notes and all of the notebooks that I have are full. So I have to recycle those. But anyway, this is a three pack and I really like this one because I love the colorway. There are three different notebooks and there are three different patterns. Um, of course, floral and they have like this really gorgeous gold foil. And yeah, $12.95 for a pack of three at Chapters. Before I show you my palettes, I have to show you how much of a dork I am. So before I decided to depot some of my blushes here, I thought I would draw it out <laughs> so that to make sure that it would kind of fit comfortably in the palette. So I took the measurements of both the medium palette and the large, and then I also took the measurements of each product that I was planning on depotting, and then I tried to kind of fit them around <laughs> in this palette to see how they would look. Okay, these are how I have my palettes currently. So I have one large, two mediums. So in this medium palette, I have two blushes. This is Blush Baby in Pinch O Peach, and then my six shadows. And this one is my four Benefit uh, box powders, and then also three Benefit eyeshadows. And then here, I just have my loose um, four remaining MAC blushes. So what I'm planning on doing is for sure getting another medium with the four pan blush insert. I'm pretty sure you can get one with four, otherwise I'll just get two twos. And then I was debating on whether to get another one of these to put the products I'm going to depot. Okay, these four are what I'm going to depot. And the reason is because the packaging is broken and there's just, I'm not gonna travel with something that the lid is gonna come off on. I have to put an elastic band around this in order to travel with it. So I might as well depot this into a palette. So this is the Dior Rosy Glow Blush, which I really love. This one is the Dior Blush, which is discontinued. It's like on its last leg on this hinge. This is the Dior Amber Diamond, which I love, but again, totally broken. And then this is the NARS Dan Marie palette, which I absolutely love, but again, hinges on its last leg here. I love how this palette turned out. It took a little bit of work to get the pans out of the Dior um, packaging, but I'm really happy with how it looks. Um, this was not a casualty of depotting. This was um, when I dropped it a couple years ago. Anyway, these six are from the NARS Dan Marie palette, Dior Amber Diamond, Dior Rosy Glow and Petal, and then this is the Dior Blush in Pink and Love, and I'm very happy with it. I have my moon roof open because it is such a beautiful day, but I'm not feeling the sun that is hitting my face occasionally because I have a lot of stuff going on with the skincare. And although I do wear sunscreen on the daily, um, I usually 
put it on in the morning and I don't really reapply in the afternoon or throughout the day. Um, maybe I should buy an SPF powder product so I can reapply and it's a little bit easier for me um, because reapplying a liquid during the day is just not going to happen. I was going to go straight to pick up some dinner for myself, but it is going to pour rain outside, so I figured I'd come home, put on some rain boots. The Vo is not home today. He's actually in Sudbury for work, so it's just me, and I'm going to pick up myself. I haven't decided yet. I feel like a burger, so I might go to South Street Burger. I have to tell you that one of my favorite things in my home is our Wink light bulbs. So they're awesome because I can control them from my phone, which means that on nights like this where I am home alone, I can turn all of the indoor lights on just with my phone so it's not so dark and kind of scary. So I have an app and it's actually a little widget in my notification menu and I can just click a button and let there be light. I am now going to brave the thunderstorm that is happening outside right now. Thank goodness I parked my car in the garage because if I didn't and I had to like park outside or run around to get into the car, I probably would be a little bit more discouraged in leaving the house right now. So very thankful for that. This is what I wear in a rainstorm. This incredibly old Lululemon sweater. I purchased this, oh, I was probably still in high school if not maybe beginning university, but it was a long time ago. And I don't think I have purchased a Lululemon sweater in, well, probably since this sweater. And I also don't think I've purchased anything from Lululemon in a while. I'm kind of over it, I guess. I still really love the products that I do own from Lululemon, but I found that their quality has gone down a little bit. Um, anyway, I'm also wearing some ripped jeans and then my hunter rain boots. I'm at Michael's right now picking up this brush cleanser because I scored a 55% off coupon. A little concerned it might dry out before I use it up, but 55% off. Happy Saturday! I just finished filming a get ready with me on this look. So if you have been wondering kind of what kind of makeup I've been wearing these past couple of weeks or how I've been doing my makeup, then stay tuned for that. I'm going to edit it maybe today and upload it in the next week or so. The Bo and I are supposed to head to lunch in a bit, but we have to get our roofs done or we have to get a new roof um, put on our home. So he's meeting with a roofer right now. I opted to stay out of the conversation so I could edit my video that I'm trying to do here. But I just got an email notification that the Ordinary, I think it's called the Coverage Foundation, is now available. So I would rush over to the Ordinary website if you wanted to try that. And I chose 2.1Y. I wasn't sure whether I fell into the category of light medium or medium. Sometimes it just depends on the brand and the formulation, but sometimes medium can actually be a little bit too deep for me um, But looking at the shade chart, I felt like 2.1 probably suited me the best Of course, I went with a Y because I do have a yellow Yellow undertone if you've ever done the Sephora color IQ They give you a code for what your skin tone is and then you can like plunk that into the Sephora website and it'll give you all of the shade recommendations they have from various brands. So in the Sephora Color IQ, I am a 2Y08 and that is pretty much where I range in. I sometimes am a little bit deeper than that depending on how much sun exposure I get, but I try to avoid sun exposure on my face entirely. So um, 2Y08 is usually my shade on my face. And for the most part, the recommendations are pretty accurate. Again, sometimes I go up a shade and down a shade from the recommendation, but normally it's pretty, it's pretty accurate. And in terms of MAC, because I know MAC is usually the baseline for all shade ranges, I am an NC35. We are on our way to lunch now, so we're going to have lunch at this Korean barbecue place and then we are going to do some errands. One of the errands is, I don't know if I ever finish describing this story to you guys, but if you may have recalled in a past vlog, I mentioned that I broke the heel on these pair of shoes and I took it to 
a cobbler and they were unable to repair it and I tried contacting the uh, company so Christian Louboutin and they told me that I had to contact the store that I bought it at because they don't deal with issues concerning their shoes if it wasn't bought either on the website or in one of the stores so I contacted David's footwear because that's where I purchased these um, pretty much almost about a year ago so I should add that this all happened probably last fall so August September ish 2016 so I contacted David's shoes. I called them multiple times. I left several messages and no one ever got back to me. And then I tried emailing them a bunch of times and no one ever got back to me. So I will never, ever, ever, ever buy anything from there again because they have the worst customer service. They're so kind and friendly when they're taking your money, but when you need a little bit of help from them, they are nowhere to be found. So I would never recommend it. Plus I found that their staff is really obnoxious and pretentious and snooty and you sell shoes, like calm down. So this is what the heel looks like. And essentially the heel tip um, that goes into this part of the shoe, if you're familiar with the anatomy of women's footwear you probably know what I'm talking about but it snapped and there's a piece stuck in there so the cobbler could not figure out a way to get it out I don't know if they maybe not didn't try hard enough but I believe them when they say they did they had my shoes for about I don't know at least three months so I'm sure they weren't just staring at it that entire time but I need to get that piece out of there and I am going to go to Michael's and also some other kind of like hardware stores to try to figure out how to get that piece out of there because otherwise these are useless and I would just have to throw them out. So I'm just exhausting all of my options before I do that. Okay, we just got home and I am going to try to get this little metal bit out of this freaking shoe. I went to the jewelry making section at Michael's and I picked up a couple of things. One is an engraver, which I'm hoping I can maybe use to etch the sides of this off or something like that. And then the other is like this little mini screwdriver it's about 3.1 millimeters and hopefully that will allow me to kind of like drill a hole and then maybe yank it out i don't know desperate times call for desperate measures if this doesn't work i'm gonna have to get a drill bit a really small one bring it to my dad's and get him to drill it out allegedly according to the, sh the cobbler that i took these to they tried that and um their drill bits weren't sturdy enough or they broke or something so not cool. Anyway, um, I'm gonna see what I can do about that. It is Sunday evening now and the Bo and I just came home from my parents' house. We ha usually have dinner there on Sunday nights. But if you recall from yesterday, I was looking for a way to fix my shoes. I can't remember if I filmed any footage from that, but it didn't work. So I went to my last resort, which was drilling the shoe, and I took it to my parents' house. I actually got um, the drill bit I needed from Princess Auto. Princess Auto is such an amazing store. All the staff there, every single time I go, they're super nice, incredibly helpful. Home Depot staff, most of the time you can't even find someone who works there especially if it's like a busy Saturday afternoon and they're not very helpful. So if you ever need any help at all, always go to Princess Auto, they're amazing. Anyway, I picked up two drill bits. One is a 2.4 millimeter and then I picked up a 2.8 and I got the 2.4 to go into the hollow part of the heel tip and then I got the 2.8 to kind of fit exactly around the, the he hole in the heel, I guess. And it worked. <laughs> So my dad was kind enough to help me and he helped me drill it out. So it wasn't as simple as drilling it out. Drilling it out was actually the easiest part. I don't know if I fully explained this yesterday in my rant in the car, but essentially this is a shoe. This is a shoe that broke. It was fixed. And what had happened was 
the rubber part of the heel um, essentially it wouldn't it didn't break off but it wore down so hopefully I still have the pieces here so I can kind of describe it to you so this is what it's supposed to look like it goes into the heel of the shoe like so and this part is a wearable part it's rubber there's a little metal tip on it this is what it is supposed to look like and it wore down so that there was a hole there so the metal piece was exposed the rubber piece eventually kind of fell off it happened at work so I, I saw exactly where it fell and exposed this piece and I stepped into a grate a metal grate um, and it snapped off so this part snapped off and it left this long part in the heel. I'm not sure if you can really tell, but as you can see, this is hollow, so it's not actually a solid piece. So I took it to the cobbler and I told them that I basically just had to get that piece out. I don't know how cobblers work. I don't know what kind of tools they have, but I presume this isn't the first time that has ever happened. So I thought they would know how to fix it and they had my shoes for like I said three months and they told me they could not fix it and they told me that they tried to drill it out and they actually broke the drill bit. I don't know what kind of drill they were using or what kind of drill bit but I was not using anything fancy. I was using a rigid drill and you know just like a regular stainless steel, titanium, whatever this is made out of drill bit. So nothing fancy. This is actually cobalt. This is a cobalt drill bit. Anyway, I don't know what they were using to try to get that piece out, but they told me they couldn't get it out. I was able to, so I don't know what the problem was. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a really long, drawn out story, so if you wanna X out of this right now, be my guest. The moral of the story is essentially, take it to someone who knows their stuff, don't take no for an answer, um, and if all this fails, bring it to your dad because your dad is probably more talented than the cobbler. I'm actually really mad at myself because I paid for the work that they did not do. I paid the, I still paid the cobbler. They were going to give me a refund, but I trusted them when they said they did everything that they could. I didn't want to necessarily ask for the refund. It was only 30, 40 bucks to begin with, so it wasn't like an arm and a leg. And I trusted them when they said that they did everything that they could to get that heel tip out of there. So what I didn't know that they did, however, is they actually shaved down this heel. I don't know what kind of thought process they were going through because they actually, instead of drilling the the heel out, which is what I did, and my dad helped me and it worked perfectly fine, they actually shaved the, the heel off a little bit to try to get that heel tip out. I have no idea why they did that, but I didn't realize it until I put these shoes together and they are no longer even. So these are, I think, a 55 millimeter. Let's see. Yeah, these are a 55 millimeter, but one heel is now probably like a 45. So they probably shaved off 10 milliliters off the shoe. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So the problem was that once I got the heel tip, the broken heel tip out of the heel, the problem now was that this, this regular size heel tip, would not fit because it was too long. <laughs> but with the help of my dad, he ended up grinding this piece, the metal tip off of this heel tip, so that it would fit in this shoe. I'm never going to that place again. Uh, it's actually sad because I usually go there all the time to get my shoes replaced, like my heel tips replaced, um, my soles replaced, but I will never go there again because one, the fact that they would do that is just mind boggling. And two, the fact that they weren't, um, I guess they didn't provide full disclosure on what they tried to do. And the mere fact that they couldn't get this out just by drilling it, I just, I could get it out and I'm not a cobbler. So I'm really pissed off about that. And the fact that they would shave this heel down Okay, so here is how the shoes look. As you can see, this is the one that had to be repaired. Um, I nicked the leather a little bit here when I was trying to repair it the other day, which is fine. It's just the heel, not too worried about it. But as you can see, one is clearly taller than the other. Before I end this vlog, can someone tell me if they still make that Real Techniques kit or set, I guess, with the five eye brushes in it. I remember they used to have like an eye brush set, but 
I was looking for it because I wanted to try out their eye brushes, but I could only find this one, which is the eye shade and then the blend brush. But I do recall them having like a bigger set. So if you could let me know that, that'd be great. Actually, while we're at it, why don't I just do a quick drugstore haul? So I did pick this up. I got this one from Walmart and it was about 13 bucks, I think, for these two brushes reasonably priced. I also picked this up and this I got from Rexall because they currently have 20% off Real Techniques brushes and sponges. I don't know why I got this because I don't ever 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 use the Beauty Blender eye sponges that I have but these I found are slightly bigger than those and also a different shape. So instead of being an egg shape which I find the Beauty Blender one to be very slippery to hold just they're just too small this one i feel like i'll use a little bit more and there's just something about using a makeup sponge especially a wet makeup sponge under your eyes i usually like to dampen the sponge and then spray it with fix plus i don't know there's just something about that that works really great for under eye concealer anyway i also picked up my favorite eyeliner and it's from annabelle and it's the smooth liner in brownie and it's just a really great waterproof last all day long eyeliner it's like kind of a it's not a coal liner it's more of a like a creamy gel liner almost but in a pencil form which is really nice it is very creamy very blendable works great in the waterline also or the tight line i guess so i love this and my the one i currently have is getting a little old and grubby so i just picked up a new one this is i think about four bucks at the drugstore